The Lord be with you. And with and your with spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Few days ago, binati po ako ng isa sa mga staff natin. Sabi po niya, Father, advance happy birthday. And I was all smiles and he said, Di ba Father, 30 years old ka na? Sabi ko, how I wish. At ang sabi ko, let go na tayo sa pangarap na yan. 40 na talaga ako, hindi na 30. Sabi ko, acceptance is the key. And if you want to possess a true youthful disposition, one must really learn how to let go of age. If you look at the mysteries of the rosary, many of it depicts the life of Mary and her mastery in the art of letting go. Parang yung kanta lang, let it go. In the many events of her life, she shows to us how she possessed the Word incarnate, her Son, Jesus. And that is by a constant surrendering, a letting go. The Annunciation was the moment of Our Lady's fiat, and it was also the beginning of a great surrender. Definitely, Mary had her personal dreams and ambitions in life. And yet, because she wanted to possess the fullness of grace, she decided to let go of it all. The visitation is another display of the mastery of Mary in the art of letting go. When Elizabeth was visited by Mary, it was a moment when Mary shared Jesus to others. It was a declaration that Jesus was not just anymore hers. The Nativity was also another moment of surrender, wherein Mary never thought anymore on how the birth of the Lord should take place. However, however difficult it was, all the most important thing is that she will deliver the Lord to the world. 
the presentation is an act of letting go of our child and surrendering him back to God. And then losing and finding Jesus in the temple was a moment of keeping everything into her heart and recognizing that she is to share her son to the world. Each of these mysteries reminds all of us that the point of greatest possession is the point of greatest abandonment. That if we truly want to possess the grace of God, we must learn how to let go. This is a very significant lesson to all of us because many of us have been taught that in order to have something, we must possess it. We must grab it. We must hold on to it. Yes, this might be true to material possessions, but this principle is sometimes wrongly applied to virtues, bearing the idea of possessing or having virtues. Like, we want sometimes to possess love, to have happiness, to have joy. We sometimes even think of buying friendship, that we must hold on to these things, that we must control all of these things, that we must wrap our hands around it and never let it go. My dear brothers and sisters, this type, this type of possession can only result to one thing, and that is restriction. I think to truly possess happiness, joy, and love in one's life, we must learn how to surrender, to let go, to open our palms. Para lang yung paghawak ng buhangin, yung kaligayahan sa buhay, yung pagmamahal, parang ganun yun. Di ba kapag kahinawakan natin yung buhangin, kung gusto nating maraming mahawakan, paano dapat ang, ang ating kamay? It should be something that is open. Kasi kung igagrasp natin yung buhangin na yun, kung close natin yung mga kamay natin, all the more, kumakawala sa atin. Kaya if we want to truly possess these virtues, we open our palms. Kaya nga siguro, the greatest act of love, the greatest happiness of man was an act of an opening of palm. The true opening of one palms, of one letting go, of one truly possessing the world was displayed to us through the cross. And it was through open palms. It was through a letting go. If you want to know what surrender looks like, if you want to know what letting go looks like, if you want to know what freedom looks like, look at the cross. Look at the cross. And you can look also at the foot of the cross and see Our Lady there, Mama Mary, letting go, surrendering, mirroring the virtue of the cross of her Son. It is truly in letting go, the surrendering of things, of people, of relationships, of tasks, of wishes, that we can actually have them. Until you let these go, we will never have them, but rather, they will have you. They will have and possess us. When that surrender is given and freedom is found, we will find the virtue of authenticity. A free person is unbound by the world and knows only one thing, and that is they are beloved by God. 
Freedom and authenticity are only found by an openness to Him and having a receptive heart like that of Mary. Nothing is ever truly ours until we let it be truly His. So as we celebrate the solemnity of Annunciation, I would like to share to you this point of reflection. What are the things that we need to let go, to surrender, in order for us to truly possess the grace of God? Or should we say, so that God may truly possess us with His grace?